So the last video I said this one is getting the whole shebang, sleeves, everything like that. I half lied. Uh, it is getting built, obviously. However, it's not getting sleeves. So. <laughs> What's up YouTube? Alright, so I'm terrible with this whole YouTube stuff. Last video you guys saw, um, it, it's been a huge jump. So we went from an all-motor nitrous setup to a turbo setup that you saw in the last one. Uh, full eBay build, hack job, as cheap as I could possibly go. I use stock H23 rods, stock H23 cranks, stock H22 JDM pistons with eBay head studs, eBay head gaskets, so on and so forth. And it made 350 horsepower on 12 pounds of boost and it was fun. As you can see, we have our other engine here uncovered now, uh, and here's the one that was in the car. So we found the limit of H23 parts. Apparently the rods could only take around 350, 400 horsepower. Um, reason, being, reason why it broke is not because of the power that it was at. Uh, 12 pounds of boost, 350 horsepower, it would have stayed there all day, no problem. It loved it. It was great. Um, these are stock H22 rods and stuff I was debating on throwing in, ignore that. Um, so yeah, 12 pounds of boost, 350 horsepower, it took it all day, every day, no problem. Beat the living crap out of it, even overheated it once, and it was great. What killed it was I decided on my little wastegate over here that I was going to turn the boost up. So I have a boost cut set at 16 pounds, so I turned the boost up a little bit, trying to make it around 14 or so, and I kept hitting 16 pounds. So with the car making 350 horsepower on 12 pounds, an extra four pounds of boost would have been roughly 40 to 50 more wheel horsepower. So it was seen close to 400 horse at that point. Um, 400 horse with probably close to 300 torque. Uh, the torque is what snapped this here rod. As you can see, everything that we did is still intact. So we have in here, there, you can see, I can't get to it there. The bottom of the rod is still attached. There. So our bolts, torque down, they're good. The crank, everything, main studs, all that's perfect. Uh, our eBay clutch that wasn't letting us shift, our pressure plate, some of the fingers are dipped in, so you could definitely see like our pressure plate. It, it's wavy, it's not happy. So eBay pressure plate, eBay clutch, that is out. Um, we're going big now guys. So the last video I said this one is getting the whole shebang, sleeves, everything like that. I half lied. Uh, it is getting built, obviously. However, it's not getting sleeves. So I watched Boosted Boys videos, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. And I looked back to a video they posted about three years ago whenever they built the hatch with, I think it's like 11 to 1 compression pistons. And they used a dingle ball, or dingleberry ball hone that I have somewhere. It's gone, I can't find it. Anyway, so I went ahead and I honed it out the same way they did, and it looks good. Uh, there's a little bit of scoring on this one here, but it doesn't really catch a nail like at all, it's fine. So we're just gonna send it. We reused our eBay ARP studs, we got a new head gasket. I ordered ARP main studs, however, everywhere is on back order. We can't get anything ARP, so we're just gonna send it with the OEM stuff. Um, I was having a leaking problem through my old sandwich plate here, so I tried to RTV it. It didn't really work out so well. It still leaked after that, so we said screw it. We undid our oil pressure sensor, and we're just tapped straight into that now. Um, on the old block, the oil pressure sensor wasn't even connected. The OEM pressure sensor is just a dummy light anyway. By the time that light comes on, it's too late. So <laughs> there's no sense in running the stock one. 
Uh, eventually, I probably will get an aftermarket one so I can see the actual pressure reading and so on and so forth there. Um, at this point, we do have some goodies though. So let's move on over here. We have our male Mali, I don't know how to pronounce it, the Gold Series Pistons, the, e the Boosted Boys have. So right here, H22 Gold. They are standard bore, 87 millimeter. Um, it is, I believe, the 10 to 1 or 10 and a half to 1. It might say it on here somewhere, but yeah. And then over here, the rods we have are the Skunk 2 Alpha Series. So, these boys are thick. You can't see it really, but like, there. I don't want to open them until I build it. I just don't want to contaminate any of these nice new parts here. But yeah, we got our piston rings. We got our wrist pins in there. And here they are, our forged pistons. With our C-clips. Yeah. There she is. First time we got a forged piston over here. This is a real build now. So, like I said in earlier, this block that went out, it had H23 crank and rod, so it's technically a 2.3 liter. It's like a mini stroker is what I've been calling it. Um, this one is straight H22. Uh, it is an H22A block. Right there, as you can see, they were both closed decks. Um, this one, the reason I'm not reusing it is because whenever the rod snapped, it poked two windows in the back of the block here. So not gonna bother with the whole Jamie Bold process. <laughs> Just decided to go ahead and use a new block. So, using the new block, H22A, closed deck obviously, full H22, got the H22 crank in there, got our, like I said, the Skunk 2 Alpha Series rods, they're good for 900 horsepower. The male Gold Series pistons are good for like 800 horsepower. And so it's basically the Boosted Boys setup. The only difference is I think they have different rods than I do. They have some gnarly rods, pretty similar in um, material and whatnot. Uh, but our eBay manifold here might need to get updated. I don't think that cast manifold is gonna be able to flow what I want it to. So we might have to go to a top mount, at which point our little eBay wastegate there may need to get updated as well. But we're gonna rock our eBay turbo as long as we can. Um, it's a, pretty much the same one that Boosted Boys runs, so it should make pretty much what they make, 750 or so. Uh, we're going to see. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get it up soon here. I just wanted to keep you guys posted. We are still running the OG transmission that's been in it ever since day one. Uh, same axles, same tires. Oh, we got it. Big boy clutch, clutch masters. So we got a clutch masters. We went legit with it too. It's not a regular clutch. It's not this little single plate. We have a full on. Where's? I gotta pull it on this side. There we go. There we go. We got a full twin disc clutch. So it's no longer the cheap build just to see what we can get away with. We figured that out. Stock block, stock rod for H23 anyway. Um, same as the F22, H23 and F22 rods are the exact same. Power limit there, safely 350 if you wanna push it, 400. H22 JDM rods are a little bit fatter, so I was debating on just throwing those in. But even then, I probably would've only been limited to say 400, 450 or so. And that's just, that's not enough guys. We want to go fast. We're Ricky Bobby. We want to win races. We want to go out and have fun. So that's why we went and bought out and got our forge stuff. Oh, and on the intake, uh, I used to have the full factory intake. Um, I had a faulty intake air temperature sensor. It kept saying that my car was at like 127 degrees intake air temp or something like that, 147. I don't remember what it was. Um, so as you can see, we no longer have our little butterfly over here. We put a bolt in on this side, and there, a bolt in on this side, and we actually hollowed out everything. So it's all gutted in there. Um, I bought a Dremel over here, a little Harbor Freight Special, and we went to work. 
I had a sawzall, we cut out center pieces and hollowed it out, so we should take up a little bit of top end. We might lose some bottom end. The main reason I did that though isn't for the actual power gain. The main reason I did that is because I have an adjustable fuel pressure regulator that with the butterfly valve on the intake, the fuel pressure regulator wouldn't fit. The return line would hit on where the little butterfly vacuum saucer looking thing was. So I took that off, um, opened this up, ported it out, blocked off the end piece. That way I could get some top end and get some clearance so I could put an adjustable fuel pressure regulator because we now have a Whopper 450 fuel pump in there as well as the 950 FIC, C, the 950 CC FIC injectors. Um, here they are. So yeah, there's a factory regulator. I got to swap that out for my adjustable one. Then we have our FIC 950s. Those will need to be upgraded. Those are probably only going to cap out at around 500 horsepower. But we're going to run it on this fuel system now just to see what it does. And basically just break it in, I guess, on medium boost, we'll call it. If 12 pounds was low boost, this will be medium boost. And then high boost will be whenever we get, I don't know, 1600, 2000 cc injectors, whatever we want to get deal on. Uh, as you can see over here, I got my file and my feeler gauge. I have to go ahead and get the rings. So that's what I was doing. I figured I'd pick up the phone and let you guys know what's going on. I had to buy a new piston ring compressor because I borrowed a buddy's whenever I booked this the first time and figured I may as well have my own. So I'm gonna hop to it, I'm gonna put the pistons and rods together, I'm gonna get the rings, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the pistons and rods into the bores here. And I don't have a torque wrench yet, not till tomorrow. So I won't be able to torque anything down until tomorrow, but I could at least get the whole bottom end together. And then also tomorrow, I would do it tonight, but it's getting a little late. Uh, tomorrow I also need to tap my new pan uh, because my old oil pan, I'm not comfortable reusing that. There is just chunks of metal. There is a big divot in it somewhere where the rod tried to eject itself out of. Um, and just, yeah, I need to take my bung off because this is just a little eBay slash Amazon weldless bung. Uh, you just drill a hole, slide it through, I put some RTV on both sides, and that was that, just tighten it down and it's good to go. So I need to, so I need to come over here, do the same thing, just drill a hole right there, then poke it through, JB weld, or not JB weld, but RTV either side, that'll be done. Put my pickup tube and windage tray on the bottom once I get it all torqued down. And we're coming guys, we're making progress. I got a new water pump in there. I did reuse the oil pump. Um, I made sure that no metal particles went up through the pickup tube or anything like that, so it's good to go. Uh, here's my old water pump. You guys remember, I've already replaced this one, so it is a new one technically. Um, but like, look at all that gross deposit stuff in there, it's disgusting. So went ahead, threw a new one on there, they're cheap, may as well. I uh, got a new timing belt this time also. Uh, so we're not reusing the old timing belt that is right here. We got a brand new timing belt. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean out some of this like nasty coolant stuff. Um, again, the head already has dual valve springs on both the intake and the exhaust. Uh, you could see my intake over here. Like it's it's stock, guys. Nothing fancy. It's stock, stock cams. The only thing is dual valve springs, intake and exhaust. And that's it. Um, nothing crazy with the head. Everything is done to the bottom end. Uh, the bottom end has just pistons and rods. That's it. Simple, simple build. Um, along with the twin disc. Oh, and I also forgot we have a four bar map sensor. All right there, KS tuned or K tuned. There it is, K tuned. Uh, four bar map sensor, as well as our Honda. S300 now, so we can do live tuning, so on and so forth. Don't need to go through the whole hassle of burning chips and all that anymore. That was a pain. Uh, we may need to upgrade our intercooler. Is this little eBay one. Tiny guy. But, yeah, so, it's basically it, guys. Just an update. Get y'all caught up on what's going on. Um, oh, I almost forgot. We don't have a 335 anymore. We sold the 335. <laughs> There it goes. BMW is leaving.
picked up this BMW X5. Uh, it's a daily, it's a tow vehicle. It's pretty nice, real clean. Um, I've already used it to tow vehicles across two different states. So, got that guy, and I also bought a 350Z. So we have a drift car as well. I'm going to make some content going out to the compound, sliding that around. Stay tuned. Got plenty more to come. Main focus right now is the Civic, though. Everything is coming together. Like I said, I was waiting on the ARP main studs, but everywhere is back ordered. I did some research. A lot of people say that their OEM Honda bolts are good, and they've never failed on them under like 600 horsepower builds. So I think we're just going to send it because we already have some main bolts in there. So we're going to see what it does, I guess. So yeah, stay tuned, guys. Plenty more to come. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.